Good everyone, how are we? Let's give us some love in the chats about how your Thursday's going. Um, I have been to the Tablelands today and gone swimming at Lake, Lake Eacham, got my head wet at Miller Miller Falls and had a big fat burger in Yungaburra. Um, so I have had a good day out and then went to my sister's place, took my kids for a swim and they are stuffed, which is exactly where you want kids to be at this time of night. So, um, how are we, Anastasia and Jack? Awesome, awesome. Another big week. Uh, good to see the markets moving again a little bit. We'll probably move again tonight. Uh, um, probably in the opposite direction, though. Uh, but, yeah, it's been good. Lots of awesome. opportunities out there for everyone. But had a good week. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, as I explained earlier, Anastasia is in a room full of people, so she'll going to give me the thumbs up to tell me how she's going <laughs> in downtown somewhere in New South Wales. So um, I I know that she's doing well, but she's surrounded by people, so she, she can't um, she can't talk freely. So she's going to contribute through assisting us in the chats and stuff like that tonight. So, Jack, what do you got for us, man? Um, it's been, been a bit of a quiet week on NFTs um, for me. Uh, it's been pretty busy, um, but I managed to catch um, the fact cat capital um talk from Donny uh, this morning uh, going through uh, what's going on there. Uh, we've spoken a, about it a few times in um, our calls, uh, Brody and I, um, but yeah, it's good to see um, some movement in that project. Um, for those, um, I might just send a link. Uh, so I guess um, I'm having issues with my computer at the moment, so I can't share my screen. But um, if you want to have a look, it's um, it's on the Solana network. Um, Magic Eden is the platform that you can purchase these through. Um, the project is um, like it started off um, with a, like an incubator. So basically you would, um, th this project had a bunch of funds and they were looking to um, take on other NFTs that were struggling a little bit, help them develop them and um, put them back on the right track. Uh, and in doing so, they would take um, some percentage of that business. Um, they've just done a bit of a shift um, this week. Uh, obviously, it's been a, um, been in the making for a while, but haven't, haven't been able to be told about it. Uh, but they have just acquired a another um, business. It's called um, A. Uh, 16Z, I think it is, um, whereas they have already a launch pad project. Um, they've got a really good uh, website and everything already um, on board it. Uh, they have a couple of uh, NFT projects that are just about to launch uh, already in the pipeline, um, but the founder just uh, didn't have the heart anymore to continue on the path. Um, and Fat Cat Capitals came in um, as a venture and basically bought them out. Um, they're going to re be rebranding um, that uh, project, um, obviously to Fat Cat Capital um, and utilizing that platform. Um, but it has some really cool um, features already that we can see that um, the people that already invested in the Fat, uh, Fat Cat Capital um, will uh, start to see a return on. So there's, as a play to this, you can basically hold uh, a couple of the cats, um, get your cat knit, and when uh, NFTs come about, um, you can potentially buy um, the ones that they get um, with the cat knit. Uh, so they're like almost a free mint for those people that um, are staking their um, cats and getting cat knit. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think it's cat knit. That's what it's called. Um, for those people that obviously want to invest a bit more, um, if you hold 30 of these cats, um, it basically become a, an exclusive uh, partner. Um, and then that, that, that's going to open up another opportunity to basically become, I think there's going to be one of 20 um, of these uh, additional um, NFTs where you can basically become a venture capital um, into future um acquisitions for the project so um with what happened uh with the eight project um there's going to be a bunch of people that can uh, come in at a five percent um holder of that project and then potentially over time um get a uh revenue uh from them from other launch pads that other launches that happen from that um 
website. So uh, it's something to have a look into. Um, the floor price, when we um, heard about the acquisition, um, skyrocketed from about three and a half sold to six sold. Um, and it's, it's had a bit of a retracement at the moment down to uh, about 5.3. Uh, but I'm starting to look into average um, at about five so and um, get a, a quite a few of these. I might try um, personally and get 30 uh, myself. Um, I like what Donnie's doing um, with this uh, and what the project's actually uh, standing for uh, at launching people. So yeah, um, I might do that. I might also um, look at getting a couple of people together, maybe four people or putting in uh, an, an amount um, to actually get 30. Um, so we'll just split the revenue um, as well. So it's something to think about. And if you're uh, potentially interested in doing that, you don't want to fork out uh, 30 cats. I think I worked out to be about four and a half grand, um, but we might be able to find a bunch of people and go uh, three, four ways with that. So if you're interested, uh, just let me know. But other than that, um, I don't really have much this week. And I might throw it out to like a Q&A session if anyone's got any questions around NFTs in general, um, I'll try and walk through. And I, um, sorry, did someone say something? I was just going to ask a question, Damon. Yeah, go. go mate. Um, so based on Tuesday's um, masterclass, Jack, uh, most of the NFTs don't pay reflections. They're more of a, a growth stock. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so you you buy into a growth stock, but does that mean if, you know, like when, when you get shares, you might get, you know, a thousand shares or whatever, depending on what it's worth, where you can sell down at a certain time to realize a profit and then to give you a monthly income. But if you've only got like, you know, um, <clears throat> two or three hundreds um, meta hunters and that sort of stuff, once you sell out, you're out. Is that I'm just trying to work out how to use a growth NFT to produce as a strategy for a monthly income and what, what you might see how to do that. Or do you take the profit and then start trading and then look for other monthly incomes too? So the, uh, the ploy here would be um, to get in early, uh, get a growth on an NFT um, if you would manage to get a couple um, average sell out as it goes up, um, maybe hold one uh, if the, it's a good project. Um, if not, then just sell out um, and then either wait for a retracement and then pick back up in the, in the lull and then wait for it to go back up again. So um, you're basically buying and selling as it go, it's going up and down or um, you just hold it, um, take your profits out and then wait uh, until other NFTs uh, come about and buy into those. You can get into like flipping the NFT. So um, basically buying in uh, and then selling uh, when it goes up. Uh, basically, there's a lot of um, good alpha um, calls in um, some of the better projects. So where people say, uh, buy in at this price, just wait for it to go up and sell it at this price kind of thing. Okay, thanks. Hey, um, can I ask a question, Jack? And I'm I'm just going to share this, if I may. Can I get you to explain? I can do it, but um, yeah. I don't want to cut your grass. Can you just explain if someone wants to buy one of these? How do they work out in dollar value how much it costs them? Um, so on this one here, they've got a uh, floor. Um, so it says 5.3 and this one's done on um, Solana. So we know that it's uh, 5.3 so. And so you can use um, TradingView or uh, whatever platform you use um, and times that by whatever it, um, the value is. So say, is that what Sol's worth at the moment? It's about that. Yeah, so, um, so it's about 23 Aussie. Uh, or 16 um, USD. Uh, so you get basically five times 20 is $100. So it's a bit over $100 for one of these um, NFTs currently. 
So that's what I put on the screen is USDT. In this space, I strongly recommend you understand that most of what you see, in fact, all of it is USDT. Uh, I resisted using USDT. I'm like, I'm Australian. I'm not doing this American dollar thing. But you can't do it. It's just too hard. Uh, you know, when when Bitcoin's spoken about a certain price, you really need to be in the brain that it's USDT. So um, I would do the maths and then convert it, or you can use the Australian dollar value. So yeah, about a hundred Australian dollars at the moment. So um, mm-hmm. so thirty would cost thirty times a hundred. Yeah. yeah now the I issue mean, is is that you're not. If I scroll down a little bit further, hang on, I got to turn this off. If you scroll down a little bit further, you're not going to get like. Let's just say that you are, you are saying, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do what Jack suggested, not suggested, uh, mentioned. I should go be careful what word I use. Um, what Jack mentioned that I, if I get thirty, it's, it's further rewards. The problem is though, Jack, that once you mint one or two. the floor price will rise. Mm-hmm. So once you clear out, so it, what the term is sweeping the floor. Um, so basically what that means is you'll buy those two at 5.3, but then your next ones will be more expensive. And so it goes. Um, and so on the side there where I've um, annotated, there's an actual thing called sweep. So on there, you can actually go um, and click here on the other side. Oh, sorry, your face is covering that. <laughs> uh, um, you can actually put in here how many you want. So if you want it to say five sol, um, and then you can move this bar up um, and it, you could put it to, um, uh, scroll down a little bit on that if you can. Oh, you might. Well, let me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hang on, I just, I just got a, for some reason this is, yeah. Yeah. no, that's okay. I got it. Um, this, this little bar just here, you can slide that um, and it, you can say how many. Oh uh, yeah, there it is. Um, to sweep. So if you wanted to. Um, so can I, I can't put five sold because the floor is five. Okay. Yeah. So you could put an offer in um however if you wanted to sweep the floor meaning you'd purchase them straight away um you'd you'd have to put in i I don't know say you put six sol in there and you wanted 10 um so you'd slide your bar up i say 10 or whatever and it gives you the price down here as a um there just be aware um most projects have a um a royalty fee um, here that you have to pay. Um, so it might might be five sold, but it's um, 10%. Each project uh, amount is different. Um, so just be aware what that um, uh, royalty fee is as well and platform fee too. So uh, it won't be 5.3, it might be 5.6 so Okay. Um, all right. And obviously you've got to have a, what kind of wallet? a phantom wallet and you connect it um, up the top there um, if you so wish if yep there um, <clears throat> and, and uh, right. it will, yeah connect it so phantom right. obviously for solana yeah so i can i can I, i've actually got no money in my phantom wallet i don't think um let's see <laughs> i don't i don't hold any solana nfts That's all right, Mike, because I've got bids in on the first 12 already, so. Uh, boom. Okay, so here I am. I've got next to no money in my Solana wallet. I've connected my Solana wallet, and I can now execute what Jack's saying. However, uh, I've done the work prior and got my Solana wallet prepared. So I'm just trying to give a base, like a basic kind of um, throw in there as to how you might go about it. But that gives you a little bit of an insight. And if you want to... If you want to have a go at that, and if you get stuck, I'm sure Jack's happy to help. Um, that's correct, Dan. By, by sweeping the floor, you're going from the cheapest all the way up. You basically get whatever's there, uh, whatever trade it is. Could be a, a really common one. That could all be common ones. It's not mix and match. It basically goes from cheapest up um, up the line. So 
when you're sweeping the floor, just be careful. It might be worth doing it if you're looking to do it multiple, um, like say you wanted 30 of these, I probably wouldn't sweep the floor of 30 in one go. I'd like to do um, a, a few until it got a bit uh, too expensive. I might might have moved it from five sole to six sole and I'd stop and I'd wait, uh, wait a day or so um, and people start undercutting again and then I'll sweep the floor again. This is what Donnie did um, to pick up so many of these and also the uh, renegades too. You, you just, otherwise you blow the market from five to like 10 sole in <laughs> one sweep basically. So if Sol's 10 US dollars, mm -hmm. then, you know, if you believe that the market's going to drop tonight uh, after some news, then maybe you'll wait, you know, but if you wait, then someone else might sweep the floor. So it's one of those things that the price of an NFT will change daily. Is that right, Jay? Yes. So um, with what's potentially happening tonight, the play would be here. Uh, because there's a lag in the pricing would be uh, price of sold plummets, purchase sold cheap, um, and then go and purchase, um, or wait for this uh, NFT price to then um, adjust. Um, sometimes it goes up, um, potentially if the price of um, Solana dumps, the sold price of the NFTs go up. This is to compensate to basically say that there's the same value in USD. But if you can get that, uh, get in before it goes up, you can actually make a, um, a double saving there. So if a sole goes from say $20 um, down to $15 and the NFT price hasn't adjusted and you buy in at five, you've just saved yourself uh, quite a bit of dough before it moves back up to maybe say seven sole for, for one just to equal out at the same value. A couple of questions in the chat, Jack, can you see them? Yeah, um, so where do you do the um, TA? Um, there's a couple of different ways. Easiest way at the, uh, without holding anything, you can actually do it under the um, uh, analysis um, and activity on Magic Eden. It's kind of exactly like, um, uh, trading view. Um, you can see what the floor price has been. You can kind of see the um, market structure. Um, uh, and yeah, you can see if it's uh, really pumping and if there's the listings are going down, usually the price is going up and um, reverse as well. If there's a lot of li listings happening, um, the price is going to um, push down. Uh, so yeah. Uh, however, one who doesn't have her cats around the gate, uh, which would you get? Um, that's a hard one. Um, they're, they're kind of similar but different projects. Um, for me, like they're, they're a different league as well. Like fat cats are um, a bit cheaper um, to get into. Uh, Renegades obviously are a bit more expensive. Um, in saying that, I think Renegades probably has a um, higher chance of uh, floor price increasing in the short term. Um, but I think uh, I like the uh, the people behind Fat Cats um, as a as a team and what they've done. They've been able to sustain in a uh, bear market and have a good kitty uh, for quite some time. So. Uh, where Renegades was a rug project. They do have some good founders behind it at the moment. Um, I just want to see um, that run a little bit more. So kind of a different play for both of them. I'm in both, just, <laughs> just FYI. So Nice. That's... Um, so if I buy at 10 sol and Sol jumps up to 16 Sol overnight. Happy days, right? Yeah. Boom. Yeah, so that's what Brody did earlier. Um, was it this month? Um, he's seen that the price had been dropping and dropping and dropping. And then he's decided to um, buy a chunk at a certain value. And um, I think he's already 2x or 100% on um, what he purchased. So. 
um, which was lucky. I was actually hoping for a little bit more of a drop before I averaged in, but uh, unfortunately I didn't get it. So, If you're able to manipulate how NFTs work, the better you get at NFTs, you can actually make money. You can actually trade NFTs like you can trade coins, but you have to be willing to put time in to learn it, just like trading. You have to be willing to be there and execute that at the time that works for you and your trade plan, just like trading. So it's important that you um, go and immerse yourself in this space if you want to, because there's definitely money to be made. There's money to be lost too. So just be careful that you're only ever putting in what you can afford to lose. Um, you know, but I think that the NFT space has struggled with the bear market. However, I don't believe that that is a sign of the long-term trend of NFTs. Um, a little bit like Bitcoin, struggled, took a while to get off the ground, but some of the things that the NFTs are doing with respect to their um, uh, how they're coming into real-world life is fairly impressive yeah well you just see a lot of the um, quality projects hang around and the ones that have been set up well uh, with funding uh, and and stuff like that so uh, the ones that don't obviously um, crash and burn um, and there's potential for projects like uh, fat cats to take over and renegades and stuff like that so doesn't mean a project's completely dead in the water uh, if they ever get rugged. But um, yeah, you always want to look for those quality projects, especially in the bear markets like we are now. And if you don't know what you're investing in, find out. It's a little bit different to trading in that you're trading a coin. By all means, you should do your research, but you can make money without knowing anything because it's just a price. But NFTs do have people behind them and they have teams behind them. They have communities behind them. So, um, so make sure that you are familiar, I guess, with the history of the artists, the history of the team. Do they come with credentials? Have you looked up the names of the people on Instagram particularly and seen if they are legit um can you actually um can you actually do you know get into the whole community and the discord and 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 i say it every week do your research cool thanks jack i appreciate your time my friend uh, your knowledge i love you uh come back next week eh? <laughs> Same time, same place. Same time, same place. Hey, uh, Branham and Chili, I oh, thank you for waking up at 5.30 a.m. to get on here. That's bloody legends. Um, all right, here we go. So I had some requests from two people to do two different things tonight. So um, Thursday night, if this is new to you, and I, I see a couple of names there that I don't know. So, guys, please feel free to turn in your screen so I can get to know you just like you're getting to know me right now and Jack and Anastasia as well. Um, please feel free to... Um, hey, g'day, Catherine. Turn your screens on. Um, say g'day, you know, whatever. This is a call for you. Um, basically, it's picking Anastasia's brain, picking Jack's brain and picking my brain to get better at whatever you want to get better at. So tonight, uh, there was a request to look at EMAs and there's also a request to look at the way the market structure tells a story, I guess. So let's start with EMAs. So let's go. Who said, was it that? I was it so you can... Yeah, if you can't afford two NFTs, you can't afford one. Let's just, let's just look at that for a sec. <laughs> um who was that that said that was that donny or was it shams anyway who cares um if you can't afford two you can't afford one so yeah i somewhat disagree with that like depends on the context of that comment um 
you might have 20 grand and you're going to put three of that into a meta bounty hunter, in which case you can afford six, but you only buy one, you know? So um, <laughs> you got to be a bit careful as to what you take as gospel. Um, but anyway, let's move on. So I just need to share this screen so I can um, talk to this. So I'm just going to start at the start. Um, I am at my mother's place in a little place called Innisfail, which is just near Cairns. Can I just tell you a joke to get started? Now I have to bring all your screens back up just so I can see your reaction to my poor joke. Ready? Here we go. Here's your joke. Uh, did you hear about the two baked beans that traveled north? They ended up in Cairns. Hey, look at all the reactions. Boom. Okay. All the Americans are gone. Uh, so, um, I didn't, I didn't get it. Greg, that's a cracker, man. All right, here we go. So, um, I am going to struggle to do this. However, I am committed to you, so I'm going to do it. So, here we go. EMAs is something that is an indicator. So, when you go to your indicators, this little button here, um, I have some favorites, however, let's just do this as if we're doing it from the start. So now there's two options. You can either go to EMA and find various EMAs, in which case you'll find all sorts of stuff, right? However, um, if you've got the free or pro version of Meta, um, uh, Trading View, you will find only that it's worth using the four EMA because the four EMA indicator and what you do is you just click on this little button here to make it your favorite. The four EMA will give you four EMAs. Whereas if you're got a free or a pro version, you can't actually put on more than a certain number of indicators on your trading view chart. So it's best to make sure that you are using this four EMA indicator because it's almost like four for the price of one. So by default, it will actually come up as 3, 6, 13, and 21 as your default um, numbers, which basically means the last three, um, um, well, actually, I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. The inputs will come up as something different. So mine, I've actually set it as a default. So the fairly standard EMAs that most of us use in our chats is 50, 200, and 800. The color style needs to work for you. I just went with the default one because I find that that is the one that most will use, unless you want to go in and make them your own colors. That's up to you. Um, now, I did mention 50, 200, and 800, and you're probably thinking, well, what's that 21 thing? Well, the 21 is the actual default, right? So what I'll do is I will leave that as 21, and I will unclick this one, and you'll see over here this yellow line. So have a look there. This yellow line will actually disappear. So I unclick it um, because I don't want it. Then once I've got my 50, 200, and 800, I will go to defaults, and I will go save as default. Okay, and that will make sure that each time I open my EMA from scratch from my favorites, it will actually open up and look like that every time. Okay, so that's just how to get started. Now, I will talk to the 5200 and 800 EMAs, but I will also talk to another EMA setting that I use as well. I'll do that shortly. So... I just want to go and look at Bitcoin because we all know Bitcoin. Um, and because we know Bitcoin, it will actually have the data that we want. So I just want to double check something before I start here. Okay. That. Sorry. I don't know why it's defaulting to TRB, who trades TRB. All right, here we go. Actually, I'll do this. All right, so I'm going to turn the indicator on. Here it is, 4EMA, and away we go. So what I'm looking at here basically is I have my, if I forget, I just have to remember 50, 200, 800. 50 times 4 is 200. 200 times four is 800. And what I've got here is my, um, here I've got my, my 
lines so I'm able to confirm what these things are doing. So the last 50 uh, candles and what it does, exponential moving average, EMA, exponential moving average is basically the average of the last 50 candles and what it's doing. So think of it as the smoke from a jet. Sometimes you look in the sky and you see this big smoke thing and there's a jet in front of it and that's where that jet's come from, right? Um, and it's the same thing with a coin. What you're looking at is the last 50 candles, the last 200 candles, and the last 800 candles. Now, you've got to think that on a daily chart, that's the last 50 days, 200 days, and 800 days. However, on an hourly chart, it's the last 50 hours, which is only two days. It's the last 200 hours, which is nine-ish days and so on okay so you can do the maths you need to make sure that the emas that you're using suit the time frame the 50 200 and 800 emas are more longer term trade emas so um, you can use them on lower time frames however you will have more success with higher time frames on a 50 200 and 800 and i'll explain the shorter time frames shortly and if you've got a question, please feel free to ask. It's actually easy for me to, if you unmute your microphone, because um, me doing this and my brain on the chart rather than in the chat um, and Anastasia um, is a bit limited tonight. So if you can unmute and ask me a question live, then feel free to interrupt me. So what this is, is usually it's an indicator of trend, right? So some people will use EMAs as the only indicator. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that if you're just getting started. What I would do recommend you do if you're just getting started is use EMAs after you know trends, support, resistance, fibs, you know, the basic four. Um, but then when you've got that down, then you can start to introduce EMAs and see how price moves alongside the EMAs, okay? Um the thing is, too, that when you change time frames, you'll actually end up with different locations of the EMAs because of what I said before, in that it's actually averaging the last 50 candles rather than 50 days, right? So let's look at the four hourly time chart and let's have a little bit of a look, see here at Bitcoin. Now, what you're seeing here is this orange, if you ever forget, just come up here and you can see that left to right, you've got blue, fuchsia. That's a fancy uptown word. Where would we say that's from? Let's say that's from Bondi Beach in Sydney, fuchsia. Um, we've got a blue one, a fuchsia, and an orange um, number there. And they actually match 50, 200 to 800 left to right. I actually can't see your face. I'm making poor jokes because I'm only on one screen tonight. Um, so what I just want you basically to understand is that EMAs will or can be used at a point of price change of trend direction. So let's have a look back a little bit. So you should always be doing your back testing. Okay. Now you'll see here that this 800 EMA is running through. It's just creating that trend. You'll see that the blue one's kind of hugging price action. Anyone tell me why the blue one might be hugging price action more than the others? Feel free to unmute your mic. Don't tell me in the chat. Show us your face, whatever you want to do to make that happen. I'm actually just going to go back to you and your faces before I do anything else. Can anyone tell me why the blue one would be hugging price more than the other two? It's on a shorter time frame. Yes. Any other reason? Uh, it's only measuring the last 50 candles because that's the 50, right. right? Yeah. Yep. So therefore it's going to hug a lot tighter. It's going to stay closer to price action because the last 50 candles um, aren't moving at the same kind of uh, distance uh, long and short that the 200 and 800 will. All right, so you could have a consolidation period in which that average might just sit right up close, close and tight to it. When you look at the 200 on my chart, um, you'll see that you have a 
you know, a bit more movement away from the price action. And then the 800, it's almost like the 800 is doing its own thing. So I just need you to note that, that the most accurate, particularly on the bigger time frames, will be the shortest or smallest EMA, which in this case is 50. So what I want you to have a look at is moments like this, for example. So if we zoom in on this guy right here, we've got blue over fuchsia. Let's call it pink for the sake of me not saying fuchsia over and over again. Blue over pink, um, and we've got the 800 going through. I'll explain the 800 and how significant that is shortly. Let's just look purely at, so let's just, um, let's just look at this. And for the moment, I'm just gonna actually mute the orange line just for the purpose of this. So what it's doing here, um, actually, I won't explain it. Let's see if you can see what's happening when the lines actually cross. So when blue is under pink or blue goes above pink, can someone tell me what they're seeing? And I'm sorry to kind of do this this way, but I think you'll learn more because if I just go blue, you'll just like, you'll be looking at something else. You'll be thinking, shit, I need to go and eat some stone fruit or, you know, something else. I just need you to... Is it change in structure? Change in Good. market structure, yeah. Good. So it's a change in market structure, right? So the whole purpose of using EMAs is that when they cross, you can get to a point where you pick up a change of market structure, right? Now, the problem with an EMA, and it, this is an important jot point to jot down or put in your jot of the archive in your brain, is they are lagging, right? So they are lagging just like other indicators, okay? Other than support, resistance, trend, and FIPS, the rest of the indicators are lagging because they need data to be able to put the data forward to the chart, right? So um, just bear that in mind. So they aren't indeed super on time. So what you'll see, something like this here, is you'll see that, whoops, I haven't charted for a couple of days, very rusty. Uh, what you've got here is a change. And as a result, the blue will go over and the blue will follow up there and the trend will be formed, right? So using EMAs, to look at trend reversals would be a way to do it. If you're looking at the crossover, you might say to yourself, okay, how am I gonna use this? How am I gonna use this crossover to actually take the trade, right? Now, here's where I say that you should be understanding support resistance, okay? So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more because I prefer to zoom out as far as I possibly can to find out where support resistance is. And this is something that you may note. I taught my friend Clo, uh, well, I wouldn't say I taught my friend. I, I worked with my friend Clo the other day in Cairns um, about that. So good to spend the day with you, Clo. Um, about, you know, zooming out and making sure that you actually see the narrative of the story, which is what I'm going to do next. So you should be looking at actual points where, Price has actually changed direction. Now you can, for the purpose of this one, put something down here as well. And what you'll notice is that it's a push and it's a resistance push. Now this one's probably not the best example because it was a strong push through and there was no retest, but um, that's where you would enter. Now, where do you enter at this point? So let's just say that I'm right here and this thing's crossed over and I haven't picked this up until uh, let's say this candle here. Um, so let's say, say that I've kind of jumped on the charts and picked up that there's been, so this is what I'm seeing live, okay? Now, what do you think about this? Tell me what you as a trader, as someone who's done the course, what are you feeling about taking this trade based on EMAs only? What are you thinking? I 
may not go in on that yet personally. Why? Only because just I'm not a sole believer on when I see those EMAs cross, like that's all that I need to go in on a trade. Um, personally, I would like to see a retest of the, um, what is that? The blue line, your, your, yeah, 50. My bad. Yeah, the retest of the 50 or retest of the 200. Is that it? Is that the purple one? 200? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I would want to see a retest of it before I'd go long. Um, that'll also line up with that with that support level right there too, and um, that that would be a that would be something I would do is I would wait for the retest of that support before I'd go long off just based off of the crossing of those EMAs. Okay, that's good. So what Branham just basically said is exactly what I was hoping someone would say. In that you're waiting, you're waiting for your confirmations, right? So let's just press the play button. Now, what I could do is I could say, okay, the EMAs have crossed. I'm going to wait for some sort of a confirmation that this is indeed um, bullish because when blue crosses pink, and you can write this down if you want, when blue crosses pink, that's your opportunity for longs, right? When blue, sorry, when blue crosses pink up like this, when blue crosses pink down, that's your opportunity for shorts. But what you're doing is you're waiting for confirmation. If you're not waiting for confirmations, then you're dead set trading blind, all right? You cannot trade blind. You cannot trade on gut instinct. You cannot trade uh, on a whim. You just got to have confirmations. You've got to, because you've got to think to yourself, I am in this game to make money. Full stop, end of story. Yes, we're making friends. Yes, we're getting butter up mindset and all of that stuff, which is totally fine and totally cool. But ultimately, the goal is to live a laptop trade travel lifestyle, be able to provide. I could go on and on and on. So you don't want to lose that. Every step you take backwards, you have to take another step forwards. I'd rather just go forwards, all right? I'm a big unit. I like to just go in one direction because I don't like to do reversals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait and I'm going to set that based on this EMA. So right now I'm going to go into my call out tool, which I absolutely love. And I'm going to say, right, I on this line here, let's put this over here. I'm going to wait. Uh, it's okay. EMA blue gone over pink. Wait for uh, push through um resistance all right i'm just gonna write myself a little note so because this i'll oh, just a little hint for you see how that's way too big okay i'm gonna just make sure that i press enter on each of those someone taught me this the other day i didn't even know uh and make it a bit smaller Okay, I'm going to put the call out where I need it, not there. Maybe I could, but this is where I'm actually looking. I'm not actually looking at that because that's already happened. I'm looking at this. This is what I'm looking for. Now, again, this isn't the best example because I know that price actually shoots through. But boom, there's my break. There's my retest. And there's my confirmation that I can now enter. All right. I need to make sure that I break, retest, enter. Break and retest, for those of you that are listening, break and retest is the way to trade. If I said to you, write down right now all of the educators that you respect in the Elevate program or within this circle, what is their tr trading style bread and butter? Break and retest. And Nina's already typing it in the chat. I'm seeing her do it. Okay. So I need you to make sure that you become or at least learn more about break and retest trading. Now, has that retested fully? Well, no, but you've at least gotten a strong, a strong bullish push. Why is that strong bullish push happen? Because it's supported by EMA traders entering. 
it's supported by that. EMA traders influence the way the market moves. Okay. Now you've just got to be a little bit careful in that you, when you are setting um, trades up, that you're giving yourself enough room. Okay. So if you're looking for a long position on this one and you're looking to enter here, wherever it goes, what you need to do is make sure that you're covering wherever you are comfortable. Now, for me, I'm looking at these kind of wicks at and around the cross and I'm kind of going, hey, where is it that this might come back to? Now, this is stopped here. Sorry, this is crossed here. And this is kind of the lowest section of that cross. So what I'm fairly confident in that if my position size can cover that wick, then perhaps that's a trade. How far is it going to go up? Not really sure. Um, but I'm going to try and set my, um, you know, my position size, whatever it may be, from two to two and a half. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll say, okay, let's just move that now that I've got that. Uh, where do I reckon if this breaks, which it has, where I'm going to go to the daily and see where's this going to go to. So, you know, is there a trade on? Okay. Now, maybe there isn't, maybe there is, not sure. But you just need to make sure that you are indeed checking all that. Now, what, what could I do if I am entering too early? Well, this is the thing. If you entered over here, you probably wouldn't go that deep. You might have gotten stopped out. So you have to be somewhat careful with, with trading these in that if this kind of goes a little bit sideways, what you can end up happening is that you will get that push down because the EMA is kind of flattened out. The um, you know it's come back down, so you kind of don't necessarily rest on your laurels. What you need to do is make sure that you are indeed watching how market moves. If market, let's just say that you've projected something like this or whatever, wherever it may be, if market hasn't pushed and you got yourself a bearish engulfing and you've come back down, you need to be alert to the fact that the EMAs may not have enough strength in them to be able to stay stay up. It may or may not happen, but what? how many times have you seen, give me some, some chat loving, how many times have you seen it pushed, it's gone, it's come back down because it went burnt and then it's gained momentum and shot. And here you sit with your bag sitting on the floor rather than in your hand i've had that happen so many times so you need to really make sure that during this period here which you should be drawing a box around um you know if, if i go back and retrospectively chart this with a little bit more detail you're making sure that you've got yourself a zone and and what you would set up as a part of your conditions in trading an ema is some sort of in the zone box and you should be saying to yourself, if this goes back through this zone, um, I'm not a huge believer in just trading with support and resistance. I think that you do need to look for zones, even if you just do one line for support and resistance and then try and find a zone of either no trade, a danger zone, whatever you may call it, um, then you'll end up with a, with a more successful um, trading style, but you'll also end up with uh, you know, the ability to watch. Now, if you're in this trade for $10, say, you can still back out of this and only lose two. But if you're if you're letting this fall, then potentially you can use, lose 10. So you need to be alert to your conditions of the trade. Maybe you'll, um, you know, set some horizontal rays throughout or whatever. So if you were to draw a box, say, uh, and then it comes down and hits that with an alert, then what you could do is you could back out of that trade, whatever it may be. All right, so let's just see what it does. And then I'll give you another example. So it would have stopped you out here, but it still would have made you take profit, right? So that's this is why you don't enter too early or you set your conditions and make sure that you are indeed trading according to your trading style that works for you. Your targets are correct, uh, but also don't force taking this trade so early that you do get stopped out. If you do, don't chase it, right? You can see those EMAs are keeping a fairly equidistant um, line between each other. And you can also see 
that these EMAs, and you hear about EMAs being respected, well, there's a point of EMA respect. And sometimes if you're not using EMAs, you'll see market go like that and you'll go, why is that bouncing at that point? There's nothing to make that bounce at that point. And the, the fact of the matter is, is that the EMA is being respected as a living, breathing trend line, okay? Um, so what you need to consider is when you are lo looking at this, have you hit your take profit? And if it's respecting, now this one here, let's have a look at this one here. We've got a green flag, a green candle, and then we've got a bearish engulfing, which usually means that it's going to keep going down and it actually broke trend. It's come back, retested that. Um, it's come back, broken, come back, retested it, rejected, come back through it, and maybe your entry point is there. Maybe there's another entry point for you there. So you can use EMAs however you want to use them. Um, I would strongly recommend that you jump in and back test EMAs and just see what it does. See how um, you know price rejects or supports off EMAs. You can see there, there's a support, there's a break, boom, retest again. And there's not even a trend line in sight. There's not even a support line or resistance line in sight. I don't even need it. Um, but you can see, look, look at that wick come down and respected that EMA. So when you're looking at movement and what you see here, have a look at the two EMAs coming back together because it's gone short and your average is there and here it is again. So what you need to do is go and sit there and say, hmm, okay, I need to try and look and back test this and see how it works how it works for me and how I can make it work to integrate into my trading plan. So you'll see here that blue has now crossed. We're going short. Have a look at what it does. It's crossed here. We're going short. Pushed out, which is the market makers. They come back and say, all right, let's take some money off these guys. Um, crosses again. You can see it's going up. As the blue rises, so does the price. As the further away they get, the more confident you can get that that long was a good one and so on. Okay, but when you play this, and this is called backtesting, everyone. If you're not doing this, you really need to have a look and see where and how and why this happens. All right. Now, if you can get an EMA that crosses at a point of support or resistance, then that's even better. So just at a quick glance of that, at a quick glance of that, you've got a support line there. You've got something going on there. You've got something going on here. All right, and, and, and you might be saying, how does he do that so quick? Well, the answer is that I'm just looking left, seeing where market structure has bounced off before and just drawing that. That's all I'm doing. There's nothing special about what I do. I'm just zooming out so that I can actually see where these almost like these ladders rungs are on this coin. Um, now, we all know what happened when it hit this price. It's turned around. The EMAs are going to cross and then you're going to just free fall in love with it because that's the bear market. And here we go. So what you can do is use that to your advantage. Now, let me just add the 800 back. And explain that a little bit. Just gonna stop that. So the 800, um, is something that I use. And if any of you guys use this, please feel free to jump in. The 800 is something that I use to basically use as almost like the surface of the water, right? So let's just give a little analogy. I'm just going to come back and look at you guys for a moment because you're all beautiful. Um, the surface of the water, right? So if you think about something on the water, it can float. 
and you can go and grab it. You can take it up out of the water. If you've got something submersed, 90% of things that you put underwater will, will drop to the ocean floor, right? So I use the 800 EMA, more so on the shorter timeframes of the 200 EMA that I'll explain later, but the 800 EMA I will use as almost like, a, is this thing underwater or is this thing above water, right? So if it's underwater and blue goes below pink, hang on, I'm just... If it's underwater and blue goes above pink, sorry, I pressed the wrong button there, you can probably have more confidence in shorting. So blue underneath, underneath the yellow line, you can have more confidence in shorting if the blue crosses the pink. You can have a lot of confidence in shorting. If... Let's let's not use Bitcoin for the purpose of this. Let's use something else. Let's use Sol because Sol seems to be the flavor of the day. If you are looking at the problem is is that a lot of the coins follow what Bitcoin does, right? So the bear market. So let's look at the bull market just to kind of support what I'm saying. You can see here that in a bull market, it's above the 800, in which case it's above the water. And things can be taken out of the water. Things can float away, whatever it may be. And blue sitting above pink is a good thing. Now, if you learn EMAs for the bull market particularly, you can have a lot of confidence that you are indeed making money if this blue one is above the pink and it's above the 800. You can be fairly confident that whatever that blue one stays away from that pink one, you're sweet, right? If this blue one kind of turns around nastily like that, then that's probably your, your sell signal. So your sell signal for that one would probably be somewhere around there where that's changed rapidly, right? If you missed it, then you can still look at these two coming back together and maybe that's your sell signal. You've still, if you've taken the trade, let's just say you waited to enter there, have a look at that. Imagine taking that. All right, and you will in the bull market because you all know how to trade. So bull market's coming. You may as well learn how you can use EMAs to your advantage. Don't know when it's coming, so don't take that as financial advice. Uh, your, your bear market, have a look at this. These crossed and that blue line crossed here came back and tried, didn't make it, and look what happened here. Now, if you've taken that for a short here, based on your EMAs crossing, and you've managed to, well, you may have gotten out there, 46% trade. You may have waited and sort of come back and went, oh, shit, no, that's okay. It's still a 25% trade. You may have had the eggs to stay until here or here or here. Who knows? That's a fairly decent drop. So um, what I'm saying is that EMAs can be used in conjunction with um, CCI, support resistance, trend lines, fibs, yada, yada, yada. Probably wouldn't use them in isolation, but um, definitely they're there for the taking. What you can also do is look at... Um, how they work for you, back testing. I'll say that again. But the shorter, the longer time frames, the bigger EMA gaps, 5,200, 800, can work to your advantage. You can, don't get me wrong, you can use them on 15 minute time frames. You can, I'm not saying that you can't, um, but they tend to have less um they tend to have less crossovers i i think you could say um on a 15 minute time frame there's just there, there's just kind of because it's such a short little thing they they kind of hug a little bit closer so you'll see that the 200 there's hugging just that little bit tighter 
what the advantage of the smaller time frames and EMAs are, and Brennan, you can back me here if you want or deny me, that often when you've got 15 minute time frames, for example, EMAs are very respected in price movement. Yep. Yeah. So if you're a scalper or you want to try smaller time frames, your 5200, 800 is a really, really strong thing to use to support you in that you will have more success with your EMAs turned on than off. And if you look at respect of the EMAs as to where price is moving, now look at this. The blue one, it's rejected, 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 broken, supported, broken, rejected. And so it goes, support, support, support. Look at that. As a trend line, as an exponential moving average trend line, you can pretty much follow that to a T. Like, look at that there. That's respecting the EMA. That's rejecting off the 200 and respecting the 50, the, the 50, right? Now, when this squeezes, that's awesome. When the price, when the EMA comes in and price has moved into a squeeze zone within the EMAs, it's the exact same thing. Tell me, unmute your microphone. What happens when price squeezes? breaks out one way or the other that's right so you set your hedges you set your positions you look at what bitcoin's doing you look at what the market's doing and you say hey let's trade the shit out of this and make some cash all right so you you can use these however um but hopefully that's given you some sort of an insight i, I want to throw or just a bit of caution to the wind though with the emas too sometimes the impatient patience is key when it comes to playing the emas on like the 15 minute time frame um because sometimes it can throw some like false signals like you can get a, a crossing of your 50 and 200 but the overall trend is still bearish and it could just be a retracement or a pullback in the overall downtrend um, so that's also where it comes in play. Like I wouldn't necessarily just use these EMAs alone, as Damien said, definitely pair them up with other parts of your trading plan, support and resistance, trend lines and all that other good stuff. Yep. Echoed, echoed, echoed. Totally. And this is someone, Branham, uh, for those who don't know, Branham, he actually uses these and him and I have chatted a lot about EMAs. Um, and definitely something that you need to learn. Uh, any questions? I, I, any questions you want to ask me on that so far? I, I'm going to keep going. Um, in my brain, it was going to be quick, but, you know, the bell hasn't gone yet, so let's keep learning. <laughs> um, okay, next. Let's clear that and let's go to for EMA and oops, sorry, that's a lie. Let's go to for EMA and this time I'm going to use 10, 20, 200. All right. Now, some people use different numbers. Me, myself, 10, 20, 200. Okay. Now, this changes the game. 10, 20, and 200 changes the game. So I'm going to go down to the hourly time frame, which a lot of people like to trade. And the last 10 candles is blue. The last 20 candles is pink. And the last 200 candles is orange. Now, you'll notice that when you're going with 10 and 20, what do you notice? Anybody? Help me out. Help me, help me, help me. I'm drowning here. When they spread apart, we get a bigger move. And when yep. they're closer what together, they're, um, we're just consolidating. Yeah. What else do you notice?
10 and 20. They're a lot tighter. They're a lot closer. Exactly. Greg, that's why you're my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell the others. Um, they're a lot closer. They're both a lot closer to price action. Why? Because it's only the last 10 and 20 candles. So, of course, it's going to be tighter. So what that does is it allows you to use these EMAs really more so at a cross point to see, okay, who's got the strength here? Um, same deal. Blue over pink means long. Pink under uh, blue under pink means short. So let's go back. Let's have a look. Let's do some back testing and see what happens, All right? Blue, cross, blue, short. Come back, cross, blue above, long. Comes back, price changes, stays above, long, long, long. Comes back, comes close, crosses, short. All right, crosses again, long. Over here, stays tight, consolidation. Stays tight, consolidation, right? Make sure you write that down. Stays tight, sideways movement, consolidation, I should say. Crosses over, short. Crosses over, long. Where's the 200? We're above the 200. So I've actually got more confidence longing because it's above the 200. Right, I've got more confidence longing above the 200. All right, below the 200, I've got more confidence shorting. So that's here. This section from here to here, that's a short, that's a short zone. Crossed over, also risen above, there's your long zone right there. So I don't need to re-explain this because it's I've already done it with the 50, 200 and 800. However, you need to put this learning into back testing. I'm not saying go out right now and whack this on your charts and start executing it because you may not be good enough to do it. You need to back test it. All right. You need to back test it. Um, okay. Thanks, Anina. I appreciate your kind words. Um, okay. Happy days. Any questions? So, in summary, above the longer EMA. More confident longing, below more confident shorting. Make sure that you know what the blue and the pink mean and make sure that you're able to um, incorporate your this into other, um, other uh, using other indicators and other things that you like. Now, if you're able to use the CCI, uh, you'll actually be able to put these things in practice, particularly with EMA. So the CCI and the EMAs are like um, me and Christmas ham. We just love each other. So um, what I want you to consider is how can you use the CCI to consider divergence? I'm not going to go into that because it's already marching on with respect to time and I hope I'm not boring you, but you're all still here. Um, uh, and how can you use divergence and, and, you know, all those kinds of stuff to overboard, oversold, whatever it is, to help you. Now, what you can do is that you're going you're gonna to go, hang on, I don't want to keep going in and changing the 4MA from 50 to 200. And, you know, what if I want to put them all on? Or, you know, what if I want to do this or that? So you, so you go in, you change it, yada, yada, yada. And I don't want to change this as default. I don't want to set this as default. So what you can do, I'll just remove this thing. Um, what you can do is if you've got the CCI on, you can just go to this little guy here, indicator templates, and you go save indicator template, and you can save it as short term EMA. 
um, and it'll save that 4EMA and it'll save the CCI. So that way you're able to have it. And then the next time you go in and you go to your short-term EMA, so let's just say that I don't have it on. All right, let's just say that I've got some other stupid indicator on, like um, something else. Hey, I won't do it. No, I don't want to disrespect indicators. They might hear me. So if you click on this and you go straight to short-term EMA, boom, it'll come up. It'll come up exactly as you left off. Questions? What's the best EMA settings for scalping? Well, that's up to you to decide, Chloe. You can, I personally would use 10, 20, 200s for shorter time frames. I'd use 50, 200, 800 for longer time frames. But if you are dead set scalping and you are prepared to scalp, what I would do if I was you is do some back testing um, and see what works for you, see where you would get the most winners had you executed trades, and then go with that. CCI versus RSI, well, I don't use CCI or RSI. If I'm being honest, I personally don't trade with anything other than support, resistance, trends, fibs, EMAs, buster, okay? Um, I don't use them personally. So you would have to consider what you've been educated on in cooperation with backtesting. Uh, if someone wants to answer Anina's question, I'm more than happy for you to jump in and do that. Any takers? Going once, going twice. It's just like, what what color of wine do you like to drink? You know, if you've got a red, if, if you're comfortable with. CCI, RSI, MACD, whatever. They're all lagging indicators regardless. Yeah. The only thing I'd say, Damien, that I heard that someone's talking about scalping is don't be afraid to change your EMAs on lower time frames to suit um, support. You know, you, you can change your EMAs, and I've, I've done that with scalping where you, every currency or coin will be different and you can change your EMAs to have one that seems to follow the um, the candles a lot closer. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, Justin um, used a guy's name. Oh, someone remember it is Faust, something Faust, Cameron Faust, Charlie Faust, someone on that call. Yeah. If you didn't, you can go to my YouTube channel, which is just youtube.com forward slash at Damien Johns. And you can find the video that me and Danny and Justin did where Justin actually went through his 13 EMA strategy. Uh, so you can just zip through that. I mean, by all means, like, subscribe and watch it. But you can zip through it to where Justin started to speak. Plug, plug. You like that one, Brenham? <laughs> yeah. um, little section there that Justin, when Justin starts to speak, is the American guy. Uh when he jumps on, you can actually just, he goes straight into that adder trade that actually one talks about his 13 EMA strategy. And then there he drops the name of the guy. I'm sure it's like Cameron Faust or Charlie Faust, F-O-U-S-T. I'm pretty sure. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel that talks about his 13 EMA strategy. Um, if you just Google 13 EMA Faust, uh, and it's here maybe if you're there, you can try and find it if you just google faust 13 ema something um and i know that annie on trade travel chill also does an ema video that's really um really really good so yeah random thoughts on mfi i don't really <clears throat> i don't really use indicators like that too much i'm keep it simple like you do demo as far as sport resistant trends and emas yeah so that one i'm not really too certain other than that it's just the money flow indicator yeah, yeah. what it does it it incorporates volume to the rsi and that's why i find it that with crypto might be a bit more interesting than just the rsi because some coins have no volume and and it changes a lot see but i'm trying to find something 
more. I've gone through Investopedia and stuff, but I, I haven't found someone that actually uses it. I think it should be interesting, but I'm trying to find someone that really uses it. That's why I asked. I think it would be good in, in conjunction with the rest of like, like a trade plan as far as like just solely using that is like, know. you know, definitely, yeah, yeah. No, I, I would definitely just use it in conjunction. I wouldn't take it with too much heart. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I realize this has gone on. Um, do you guys want me to talk about the narrative of the charts? How about I give a, um, how about I give a summarized version? Yeah. If you want me to do it, just give me a thumbs up. Yeah. All right. Look at all the love I'm getting. I'm feeling so big for them. Um, so what, uh, what I just wanted to talk about basically quickly is this. Oops, I forgot to share. Hang on. I'm like already in the zone here. I'm feeling bit clamped. Okay, here we go. Let's look at trashing this. Gone. So what I want you to consider is what is the narrative of the charts, right? So what is this thing doing? So this is the daily, right? Let's have a look at the monthly. No, let's not. Let's have a look at the daily, just for the sake of trying to keep it shorter. The daily, what's what's happening, right? So what happened was Bitcoin struggled, Bitcoin picked up, Bitcoin gained momentum, Bitcoin got popular, Bitcoin went to 66,000, well, 64,000, dropped out of the sky, nad, Bitcoin's dead, 30 grand, whatever, come back to 66 or 67, boom, down we go, down to nine. <laughs> I mean... No, I'm just joking. 17. Here it is. Okay. Um, now, what's it doing? What's it doing now? Anyone? What's the story? What's the story that it's telling you? Let's Consolidate. be interactive. Consolidate. Let's have book and tape time. Hey? Consolidation. That's all I see. Yeah, right. Now it's consolidating. All right. So if I zoom right out on this and put a line let's just say something like that and then look at where the coin is actually sitting now bitcoin is very much in a consolidation point right right now if i'm looking at this zone through here bitcoin is well and truly in a point of consolidation just this blue zone there okay so we are currently consolidating now if i'm doing that and I'm looking at the movement of that price. Let's just look at the price. The price on the bottom is 16,000. The price on the top is 18,7. Let's just bring that down a little bit. Price is more like 18, okay? So what I've got here is a consolidation of 16 to 18,000. Anyone want to tell me why they think that is happening? Why they think that is the case? Capulation, just market cycle. What else? Good numbers. What's your question? Yes. Then... Uh, what, why 16 to 18? Who said something about numbers? Yeah, it's, uh, equal numbers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a $2,000 zone, right? So we've got a 16 to 18,000. It's not a coincidence that Bitcoin will come down to 16,000 instead of go down to 15,438 consistently, right? No one cares about that sort of shit. How much did your car cost? 40 grand. What's the time? 10 o'clock, right? You don't worry about rounding that stuff off. So when you're looking at the story of or the narrative of a coin, usually there's some sort of a psychological price barrier that it won't push through or it will push through. Um, for example, the amount of, uh, let's just go to 20,000, the amount of pressure that it's going to take to push back through 20,000 is going to need to be extreme. Why? Because of psychology. As soon as Bitcoin hits 19,000 again, I can bet your 
bottom dollar that it will go to 20. Why? Because it's gamed momentum, not financial advice. Don't take that as gospel. But it's gained momentum from 16 to 19. And you know what? If you're going to have a big fat bowl of ice cream, why not just put some chocolate on the top of it? Because you're already there, right? Just freaking gorge yourself. So the same thing happens with a coin. You've got to just put it out there that you've got yourself the psychological push and it's only going to take a little bit more to get to 20. So it's going to go to 20. Have a look at this. It's come through. Let's just look at this zone right here. This zone here, it's kept on pushing 20. It's kept on pushing, 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 and it stayed in the top half of this, and it's finally pushed through. However, it got to here, which is 21 and a half, which is the next psychological number, and it couldn't go any further. Couldn't go any further than that. So what did it do? It pushed back down. Pushed back down, and it pushed back down with such force that it indeed pushed through 18,000, right? It went, it smacked 18,000 with its big long wick, all right? And the buyer, the sellers were strong. The buyers pushed it back up. The buyers only had enough juice to get it back to 18 and a half, which is about here, all right? And then the sellers said, sorry, bang, arm wrestle over. Okay, and they smacked them and they got it back to 18. Let me move that line down. I bet it sits at around, sorry, 16. They got it to 16. Look at that. Look at where this line is on the bottom of this wick. It sits at $16,036. That's not a coincidence. Okay, so um, you're looking at the long-term psychology of what this thing's doing. Now, what it's doing now, it's pushing 18.1 again. Where's it going to go next? Probably 18 and a half, right? So when people are talking, oh, you know, the coins are long. Let's go long. It's bullish. Well, maybe, but it has to get through the next psychological number of 18 and a half. And when it hits 18 and a half, guess what? It's got to get through the next psychological of 20. All right? So... You need to be able to read that side of it in that you're looking at where it's pushing through. Let's pick on another coin. Let's go to my old mate. Uh, someone want to just pick a coin. Someone throw a coin at me. Don't care what it is. Throw something at me. Comp-matic. Comp-matic? Never yeah. heard of it. Um, okay, let's go to Matic. Psychology says that we are pushing a dollar. 95 cents here, all right? So this is just me playing around with, you know, where market could go. By the way, uh, I'm not encouraging you to have four or five support resistance signs on. You should only have two, but for the purpose of this exercise, I'm kind of giving you um, psychological lines and trying, trying to visualize where they might be for you. So Matic has a psychological point of 95 cents. Right. So when you look over here, when you look over here, the psychology of Matic is 95 cents. Oh, look at that. Oh, shit. Look at all the 95 cents. Oh, look at all the 95 cent rejections. Shit. There's a real psychology on Matic at 95 cents. That's where the buyers and the sellers arm wrestle. Have a look at where um, 76 cents down there. So just to look at this zone here, 95 to 76 cents. That's the consolidation zone. Buyers are waiting here. Sellers are waiting here. And we are flashing it out in between. We're just trading in between if we're trading a zone. So if you're in a trade right now, you're actually trading in a consolidation zone on any coin you're doing. Um, and you then break through and then you're trading a psychology, psychological zone to the next arm wrestle. All right? So... Uh, just be alert to that, that the, the, the point of the, um, the market sits at financial consolidation zones. Moving on from that, uh, this is upon request of my good friend across the ditch, Nina, Palmerston North, happy days, south of the North Island, love, love it a bit. All right, so we've got a... Um, 
a zone there between 51 and let's get rid of that 51 and 40. That's maybe 50. Yeah, let's just say 51 and 40, right? So that's that's a psychological zone. Then you get your next one. Let's just put a line there just to see what that looks like. And then I'm going to look left just for the sake of this. I, I wouldn't normally trade like this, but I'm just doing this for to try and help Anina because she asked me. So here, over here, I've got a zone here at 63. So it looks like every 11 cents, Sam wants to make up its mind. So we've got 63 as a zone. 63 here, we've got a touch. Um, so that would be my points of interest if you're looking at psychological zones of the narrative of this story. So what are we doing here with respect to the candles, however? All right, so let's zoom right in. Sorry, I've got to do it like this because um, I'm on my mouse and I'm sorry, I'm on my laptop and I've got no mouse and one screen. So what's the psychology and the narrative of this story? So what you've got here is you've got movement. Anyone want to find something in that chart that you've seen in the education to explain to me why the coins are moving like it is? Anyone? Bearish engulfings. Where? Tell me where to stop the mouse on that. Where? Where? Where are you going to give me an example of that? There. Boom. Okay. okay, bearish engulfing here, right? So there's one. What does that tell me? Sellers are in the market. Good. Sellers are in the market. Therefore, it's come down to the last point of support. Now, let's look left. Here's the support line. This is where it's kind of rejected. Is there anything? Oh, well, you look at that. All the way over here. I get this question, ask, question, ask this question all the time. How far left do I look? Well, the answer is as far left as you can. All right. It was funny. I was actually sitting. You know, I'm going to put this. Put the screens back up. I was. I was sitting with Chloe the other day at her place, and uh, just look where she is now. So I was sitting to her left, and I sent a message to you guys about something else, and then and then I said, "Oh, look, it's me," because <laughs> I'd never met Chloe before. And on her screen, I said, "Look, it's me," and she went like this. <laughs> I said, "Yes, Chloe, look left." Anyway, you had to be there, but it was kind of funny. <laughs> um, so you've got um, a line here that is the support line that's being used after this bearish engulfing. All right. So a good mate Greg's favorite bearish engulfing candle there, it's come back to that line that has been respected before. Okay, what else do you see? So this is me trying to uh, give you the narrative and how do you read the words on the page? Yeah, Damo, you got that evening star there too as well. Up near your 63. Yep. Bounced off your 60 yet right there. Yep. Yeah. Evening star, yep. So you've got your bullish engulfing candle, you've got your doji, and you've got your bearish engulfing. Perfect. What does that tell you? Sorry. Sellers are in the market. Sellers are in the market. That's your shorting opportunity. Now, me personally, because I know how to trade and been around a little while, I would be setting up the position there above that wick. You've got your hammerish. Well, it's almost like a hammerish doji, which is even better. So you could go with a fairly tight stop loss on that. Keep this open, right? Keep that open. I'm not going to set a take profit position on that. And look, I'm going to sit there. The thing is, if I take the take profit position of that at 1.7, I'm probably not going to take that trade because it's only a 1.7 trade. All right. Keep it open. Look at what happens. Boom. You get yourself a 4.72 trade that makes it 36%. Hello. All right. There, therein lies successful trades. Therein lies your $10 trade that turns into hundreds of dollars, right? Therein lies your $1 trade that gets you out of your $1 trading and into the fact that you can do this because you've actually learned to read the pages. Think about a child in grade one. They're going to read the fat cat sat on the mat, right? It sat next to the rat, grade one. Oh, look, daddy. I'm level reader number 12. 
I'm like, yeah, whatever that means. I don't have a clue what that means. And then suddenly my little girl comes home and says, Daddy, I'm at reader level 28. Why? Because she's gotten better at reading the words. Then she'll come home and say, hey, Daddy, I don't, I'm not on readers anymore. I'm, I'm an independent reader and I can go to the library and get five books a week. All right? Why? Because she's learned how to read. And the same thing happens with this. If you can read music, it's because you've learned how to read music. You have to play the instrument to make it sound exactly like it should. All right? So learn to read the music. Learn to play the song. Learn to read the charts. Learn to trade. It's as simple as that. So you'll see that this evening star here drops to this line. You can see that these candles slow, indecision, indecision, get out. All right. I'm a massive fan of this tool here. This um, this one, sorry. This one here, this vert horizontal ray. The best thing about a horizontal ray is you can make it as long or as short as you need it to be. If I was trading this and I was already in that long from that evening star, which you should be if you've picked it up, and this was indecision, indecision, I would actually make a point of putting this wick here because that's the last point of actual rejection. Putting a little sneaky alert on that and saying, okay, if I did go into that much profit, so let me just um, show you the psychology in my brain on this trade. I've taken from here, I've got myself this, 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 it's come down to that. So, sorry, I should have drawn that over the top because then it's going to be a little bit easier for you to understand what I'm saying. All right, it's come down. It's come down to that. Indecision time now, but I'm happy with taking that much profit and getting out of that trade. Sorry, that's not a straight line, but across here, I'm happy with taking that much profit. It's still a very good trade, and I'm more than happy to get out of that. It's a 29.37% trade. Now, if you've got that on 10X, that's where you've got your 290% boom Instagram. Look at me, stroke my ego a little bit in the chats because I'm awesome. Trade, all right? There's no disrespect to anyone that does that because good on you if you can get those trades. However, if you are trading that even at 2X, 3X, 4X, that's massive. That's a massive trade. Okay, so um, you need to be able to use your education. Mm -hmm. You've got the education. You've got the flags. You've got the, um, you know, you're this and you're that. And the next things, your, your, your candles, your dojis, your oh, et cetera. You know, you know what, you, you've all done it. You need to be able to see them on the chart because the next sentence will support the sentence prior in a book. The next chapter will support the chapter prior, just like the next candle will support the candle prior. And it all tells a story. Sometimes they form into pictures. Sometimes they're individual words, whatever it may be. Think about when you're reading a book. Sometimes when you're reading a book and there's just one line, that's the strongest sentence on that page and sometimes you get candles that are the strongest move and that tells a story the sellers are in the buyers are in and that's when you execute all right so um for the sake of not talking all night because i could talk about this all night um that's a little snapshot as to how you can read charts better questions comments you're fucking solid bro oh, i'm just drunk it's easy nah just joking i'm totally not <laughs> thanks anina appreciate you um but yeah it's you've just got to do that you want to be an expert at this how are you going to go about that you want to rip in and make money you can go buy a guitar and have it sit in the corner 
I did that four years ago, and guess what? I can play Amazing Grace. <laughs> Woo! Can't wait for someone to die. Okay, so um, I could be like a funeral Amazing Grace player professionally, like charge like five bucks a pop, and then maybe I'll be able, able to afford to take five one dollar trades. So, um, you know, it's it's something that you must do. And I do hope that you're able to, and I do wish you well, because I think you can, and I believe in you. But my question is, do you? Um, if you've been here a while, which most of you have, what's stopping you? What's holding you back? And I'm more than happy to one-on-one -on -one Zoom with you. Uh, if you just want me to feed it to you and tell you some home truths, because I will. All right. If you want to sit there and talk to me about how you're feeling or your anxieties or your issues or your whatever, I'm more than happy to give you that time to do it because ultimately if you win, then so do I. Okay. I should have stopped the recording before I said that. <laughs> Whoops. So um, nice knowing you all. I'll be on Zoom for the next four years of my life. Um, no, just kidding. But, um, yeah, thanks, Catherine. I do hope that it's simple and understand, and that's exactly why I do this. I'm trying to make it simple. But you know what? It already is. If you look at the ability to trade, and the ability for you to be a success. And then I appreciate that the first time you watch the education, you'll go, holy shit, what is this? But what you have to do is you have to say, okay, support and resistance, let's put some support and resistance on, zoom out, you got it, right? You need to be looking out, zoom out so you can see the whole narrative, then zoom in so you can see the short-term narrative. Why do you buy a book in the shop? Because you pick it up, you read the um, synopsis and you'll look at it and go, oh, yep, this looks good, right? The synopsis is the snapshot, which is your zoom out. Then you'll read the epilogue. Is that what it's called? The epilogue and you'll go, yep, I get what this book's about to be about, right? Which is your trend support resistance. Then you'll start reading the chapters, which is your current market structure. And then you'll start to read the words, which is your candles. Just bring it back into something that you can relate to and you'll be a success. Yeah, I wish I could find a mentor to help me explain shit and understand it <laughs> if he could. No just joking uh, the mentors i have are awesome like seriously that you really you don't really appreciate um what's on offer i guess you i i find the mentors both within this group and uh, a bigger bigger scale in our um in your in your hub a lot very very good and there's a, there's a reason why they do what they do you know, so, um, yeah, cheers, Darren. Um, yeah, it's not that hard. So stop. It's it's psychology. It's mindset. Get it out of your head that you can't because you can and start doing it. All right. Uh, and I see you want to stop the.